Hi guys, this is Amrit and I would like to welcome you to OSPROED. This video is for educational purposes only and please never practice medical skills without the proper credentials. What are aperients? So aperient is a medication used to relieve constipation. Um, I have a funny story to share. So when I had just started working in the Australian healthcare system, I was rotating in general medicine. And this story is from one of the first few ward rounds with the team. Um, so usually in the team that rounds, there would be one consultant, one senior registrar, one junior registrar, a HMO and two interns and a couple of students. So on the ward round, after seeing a patient, the consultant said, make sure the patient is charted for appearance. And that, my friend, sounded like a total foreign language. So I was like, what is that? So I had the drug chart in my hands and usually, whoever has the drug chart on the ward round, they need to quickly check the medications, um, check if there's like any regular medications, any antibiotics, um, check at the back if the PRN stuff is charted. Um, we check if there's, you know, any medication that's written up for review by the nurses, or also like if there's anything that was withheld and needs to be restarted. So, Having the drug chart in my hands made me in charge of making any change on that drug chart. And also given, you know, that the consultant is on the ward round, um, we try to, you know, ask if there's any clarification that's needed or if there's any doubts, we try to make sure that's all, you know, done. So back to the consultant saying, um, make sure that the patient is charted for appearance. So I was like, mm. I looked a bit lost and I was shy and, you know, um, I slowly asked the senior reg, like, what does that mean? And it was quite obvious that I didn't know what that was. So I was standing with the drug chart in my hand and then the registrar got a bit irritated and took the drug chart and wrote Movicol. So I was like, okay, Movicol, what is that? And he was like, we'll talk about this later. And we continued the ward round. So the same thing happened again, you know, the consultant on the next patient's review said the same thing, you know, make sure that appearance are charted in the regular drugs. I was like, okay, so the other thing was Movicol, so maybe it's the same thing. And then my colleague got a bit irritated, took the drug chart and wrote Coloxal Senna. And I was like, holy moly, what is this stuff that keeps changing names? But um, I didn't have the courage to ask again, so I didn't want to make a fool out of myself. So I thought, you know what, once this ward round ends, the first thing I will do is go back to those drug charts and check those things and see what are they. Um, so on the ward round, things usually move quite fast because after the rounds, we have actual ward jobs to do, like taking bloods or chasing up results or doing discharge summaries, paperwork and all that stuff. So I was like, you know what, everything can wait. I need to go and check what that stuff appearant is. Because in my 10 plus years of practicing medicine, I have never used that word. So I need to know what that was. So appearant, <laughs> appearant, my dear, is one of those protective medications given to patients in hospital. They involve stool softeners and laxatives, and the goal is to keep the patient's bowels moving. So stool softeners help to soften the stool. Laxatives cause a bowel movement to happen. So these type of medications can be used after surgery because um, an aesthetic effect can have like the stomach and intestinal system to be a little sluggish. A sluggish stomach and intestinal system leaves patient feeling constipated, which can be a bit uncomfortable. In fact, a long, like prolonged constipation can even lead to blockage of the intestines. So during an inpatient admission, we like to give appearance to keep the business down inside smooth. In addition, we try to increase the fiber intake, making sure that they've got more fruits and veggies in their hospital diet. Uh, for some of like the nurses, they prefer to give like prune juice or increasing the water intake or encouraging patients to walk. Um, I would like to touch base on constipation. So 
we have what's called the Rome 3 criteria for chronic constipation, which is a very useful um, tool in diagnosing chronic constipation. Say someone had a presence of two or more than two of the six points. So point one is straining during at least 25% of the bowel movements. Number two, lumpy or hard stools in at least 25% of the bowel movements. Number three, sensation of incomplete evacuation for at least 25% of the bowel movements. Four, sensation of anorectal blockage of for at least 25% of the bowel movements. Five, manual maneuvers to facilitate at least 25% of the bowel movements. And six, fewer than three bowel movements every week. Whenever you have a patient with constipation, red flags become very, very important. And the goal is to exclude more serious conditions. So the red flag symptoms in someone with chronic constipation are um, acute or recent constipation, obstipation, which is a severe form of constipation where a person cannot pass stool or gas, um, rectal blood loss, melina or mucus, um, weight loss, fever, rectal pain, change in the stool caliber, um, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, um, family history of cancers. And you know, being alert to red flag symptoms is important as this may point towards an underlying organic cause such as cancer or intestinal obstruction or inflammatory bowel disease. So when you see the drug chart, you can also check and see, is your patient on any constipating drugs? And if they are, then, you know, check. Um, do you want to consider withholding them until the issue is resolved? So common medications are things like painkillers, opioids, NSAIDs, uh, and um, things like antihistamines, anticholinergics, antispasmodics, um, you know, things like calcium channel blockers, um, iron supplements. So if your patient is on any of these, then, you know, try to withhold for a few days. Uh, when it comes to management, we have non-drug treatment and drug treatment. So non-drug treatment is always number one, reassurance. Reassurance can be offered if there is no red flag symptoms. Okay, so you can advise physical activity, lifestyle and diet modification, increasing fiber intake, increasing water intake. And then we've got the pharmacological measures, which is like stool bulking agents or um, laxatives containing fiber. Um, so there's a, there's a couple of options that we can go there. So common options are like Xylem, Metamucil, Benefiber. There are multiple formulations that exist. Then we've got osmotic laxatives. So osmotic laxatives are medications that draw water into the stool and they result in softer stool and more frequent, easier to pass bowel movements. Options here can be like lactulose, macrogol, um, sorbitol, sodium phosphate. Then we've got stool softeners. So commonly used is a medication called docusate sodium. Um, and then we've got stimulant laxatives. So stimulant laxatives are those that help with um, the bowels to contract and pass stool along. They work in, um, in a stimulant um, fashion so they inhibit water absorption to increase the water in the bowel to help soften the stool and they increase the natural movement of the bowel muscles to help this the stool move through the colon and commonly used medications uh, are like senna or senicides uh, bisacoral um, there's also rectal options like glycerol suppositories or fleet enemas and they work by mildly irritating action and they promote the emptying of the bowels. And um, we've got lubricating uh, options like mineral oil um, that coat the intestines to help stool move through quicker. Okay, Ideally in chronic constipation, you want to start with a non-pharmacological measure and if that fails, then you can consider prescribing a bulking agent if this does not help, then one of the osmotic laxatives can be tried. So go stepwise, okay? So I hope you are now familiar with the word appearant and feel comfortable about this topic.
I hope this was useful information for you and if it was then please hit the like share and subscribe and don't forget check for more videos and until next time take care of yourself thank you